This year's Weber Cup is promising to be a classic. There is, after 16 matches, nothing to choose between these two teams. Eight of the world's best bowlers having been battling for the greatest prize in Team Tempin. The very best from America looked to have gained the upper hand early on, but Europe found a way to come back. It's day two and the stage is set for a fascinating Weber Cup. That is simple enough. The magic number here at the Weber Cup is 19. It's the first team to reach that target that claims the trophy. One point per match, with the matches consisting of singles, doubles and a baker. A team match involving all eight players. As for the scoring, it's been simplified. The matches are played over 10 frames, there's no extra shot in the 10th. A strike is worth 30, and of course, the magical score still remains the 300 game. Europe have been chasing this tournament from day one. The Americans claimed the opening two matches and set the tone. It was left to Jesper Svensson to save the day. He responded with points that kept his team in touch, helped by Barrett winning in the final match of the session. Day two, open with Barrett picking up from where he left off. Another win, this time against EJ Tackett. Barrett had put himself up for the next match alongside Svensson, but his quest to lead from the front failed in the face of Tackett and Truth. It didn't get any better when Jesper Svensson lost his first ever Weber Cup singles match. Much had been made of Marshall Kent, who was down to play four times in this session. First time out, he won with Sean Rash by his side. Doubts about the American tactics started to creep in when Kent lost to Stuart Williams in the next. The tactic came under further scrutiny when Kent lost again, this time in the doubles. Larson and Svensson walking away with the point. Required real character to turn such losing form around, and Marshall Kent found it in the last match of the session with a win over Martin Larson. It meant that Europe went into the next session two points behind, but they quickly turned that around with a big win in the Baker game and a scrappy but vital win from Stuart Williams in the first singles match of the session. The remainder of this session is made up of singles with an intriguing captain's pick to finish off. The tournament is perfectly balanced at eight all. The first to 19 takes the trophy. The pressure on for every match and we start with Jasper Svensson against EJ Tackett. Time then to join our commentary team of Cass Edwards and Nick Calling. So we are dead level then, eight apiece, as Jesper Svensson for Europe and EJ Tackett go head to head. Tackett, it's fair to say, has yet to bring his A game to the Weber Cup. 
But for anybody that's tempted to anoint this man as unbeatable, let's just turn the clock back a few hours when he lost in doubles with Dominic Barrett. And then Svensson was roundly beaten by over 50 pins by Kyle Troop. But he did beat this man, EJ Tackett, yesterday evening. And Tackett has yet to have a win in singles competition. It's not a question of if he can bring his A-game, it's when is he going to bring his A-game. His A-game is good enough to win this point, there's no question about it. And is this man back on track after a pretty disappointing showing against Troop earlier today? Two of the absolute most hottest properties on the professional bowling circuit in the world are these two players. Svensson's had three singles matches of 278, 289 and 224 so he's pretty much lined up on this lane and it's the third game of a lane dressing so they're playing on what they call the burn and Svensson with the huge advantage of being the only left-hander in the field so he working with relatively undisturbed oil Ooh, that's a surprise yeah, six pin. Still, you know, he's a left hander, so yeah, that may well stay. Just a fraction high on that head pin. But as you say, the only oil that's been disturbed on that left hand side of the lane has been disturbed by this man. So, EJ Tackett has got a chance to get his nose in front here. I say he was beaten on uh, Friday night by Jesper. Jesper did bowl a 278. Tackett was hardly shabby with 247. Uh, certainly on Friday night, anybody bowling in the 230s, 240s was not coming out on top. The standard was exceptionally high. Uh, Tackett has had mixed fortunes thus far. And he needs to really bring something a bit special here because the pressure's on him in this evening session. He's got he's up against Svensson twice. And we'll want to find a better pocket hit than that going forward. Oh, well, it wasn't actually a pocket hit, was it? Exactly. I mean, it's strange. Both these guys have had five minutes practice on this lane and they come out and shoot the first frame and uh, EJ's out the pocket. You're out of the pocket, that's when really bad things can happen. He was lucky that he was able to spare. And a nine spare for the Swede, an eight spare for the American. At least that ends any talk of a possible 300 game here. We've been close a couple of times, haven't we? None closer than this fella's effort. And he's just taking his time and gathering his thoughts. But you've noticed he's wiped an awful lot of oil off that bowling ball. Yeah, he so always does, doesn't he? So it's there's still plenty of oil out on that left-hand side of the lane. Which will help him hold the ball on line to the pocket. That's a bit more like it. Remember Team Europe attempting to go into the lead for the first time. Twice the Americans have had a three-pin, three-point lead, shall I say. That's been pegged back. Yes. Uh, Svensson draws first blood as early as it is in the game. Now, this next ball from EJ Tackett will tell us a lot. Remember, not in the pocket in his first frame. That was a much better effort all round. Just gave it a fraction more width, I think, on the outside. And so much hook and revolution, uh, revolutions on that bowling ball. It comes absolutely roaring back from the right-hand side of the lane. And it's just a matter of whether it's going to carry 10 or not. But it was a perfect-looking shot. A finely balanced match. With more to come after the break. Welcome back to the Weber Cup. It's perfectly balanced in terms of the overall score and it's pretty close in this singles match. This is one of a string of singles matches in this session that will help shape the destiny of the Weber Cup. It's the first of 19 points and each match now crucial. With commentary from Cass Edwards and Nick Halling.
Europe leading by a pin, which means they're leading in the whole tournament for the first time. I don't think anyone's hanging out the flags on that just yet. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention it. Let's see if he can stay in front. Oh, it's the seven pin. Well, to the layperson, it looked a, a pretty reasonable shot, didn't it? Wasn't that far away, and the, f the four pins just flown around off the kickback and missed the seven pin totally. Maybe a case of that ball hitting the pins just too hard. Svensson did miss one of these corner single pins, and he's missed another one right there, and that's unforgivable. I'm almost a loss for words, and I'm sure he is as well, but he's missed it on the inside. Missed it on the channel before, but look, the ball's started to turn. And that's the hardest ball that he's got, his spear ball, and it started to turn enough to miss the single pin, and that is a major, major error. Well, it is those sevens on the left that the left-hander will miss from time to time, but he went in the gutter on his earlier miss, and that one, as you say, was just repelled. Now, let's see if Tackett can punish that. Well, it's a good pocket hit, but this time it's the ten. It's the, the angle that the ball's going in behind the head pin into the one and the three pocket, and Tackett is a man that uh, hooks the ball as much as anybody in the world. And that's why it's still, it's wobbled, it's been hit, but it hasn't gone. That's six pins hit it on the way around, but just not enough. Let's see if he can uh, take care of business, which he does. A rueful shake of the head there, I think Tackett knew that that was an opportunity for him to really just put his foot down and open up some distance between himself and his opponent. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not going to tell him how to bowl, but some, they do say sometimes that less is more, less revolutions going into the pocket may just be enough to kick out 10 and not leave those corner pins standing. It'd be interesting to see. Now, Svensson's got to forget all about that howler on the single pin. And uh, a somewhat fortuitous strike, but they all go down. Yes, he had the five and the ten pin standing at one particular stage here. It's just gone a little bit wide. It's light in the pocket. Look at that. Had the five and the ten standing, but some flying wood took care of those two. And it turns out to be a, a pretty a, a valuable strike. And it forces Tackett to match that to keep his slender advantage here. He's all over the place with that one. That was flush on the head pin and got exactly what it deserved. Well, not only is it just six, but it's a split as well. Yeah, he's inside his mark, an overreaction in the back end. Three, four, six, and the seven. Now, this is a makeable split. If he can hit that uh, three pin, right hand side, bounce it across, he could make the spare, but uh, it's difficult. And it's a low count. What are these? Two out of ten, you'll see these made. Maybe three. Yeah, that up the average. <laughs> that was a very important ball there from EJ Tackett. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a very good looking spare. It looks great on TV. Unfortunately, it was the first shot that was the bad one. But uh, yeah, you make amends. Did you see Svensson was the first to give him a fist pump on that one, an acknowledgement of the quality of that spare ball. But it hands the initiative by the slenderest of margins back to the Swede. And he takes full advantage. Two strikes in a row for Jesper Svensson, 30 pins a ball. Ups his lead. It's a great looking shot here. Really powerful in that one two pocket. And he's all ten pins. EJ 
Jay got that ball to do so much work. Another great looking shot, but he needed it after that uh, six spare. He's only made two strikes out of five frames, which is unusual for him. So I say, he's one of the hottest properties, if not to the hottest property on World Bowling at the moment. Current world champion, current PBA player of the year. Svensson for a turkey. Nope. Now, you think he's paying full attention to that seven pin in the corner this time? <laughs> One would like to think so. I'd like to hope so. See, it's just on the slow motion replay, you can see that it was light in the pocket, which is why that uh, pin hasn't gone. Just remember, he has two misses on this seven. One into the gutter, one inside. So there is nothing automatic now about this. That's just about got the job done. <laughs> A celebration there. He knows he's going to be asked about that, win or lose here. Well, once you've missed a couple, you actually think, well, you know, what did I do wrong? And you will get a little bit nervous. But he covered it well and he's, uh, he's reacted to it. So once again, the initiative has swung the other way. A strike here will give Tackett a six-pin advantage. There is that strike. This has been a really good effort, and hasn't he been absolutely brilliant since he cleaned up that awkward-looking split? Well, it was that split conversion that has uh, actually put him into the lead. Well, two strikes in a row here, but it was the sixth spare in the fourth frame. It was the important one, and it was a great-looking split conversion. So both players have had a double. Let's see if the tall young Swede can get back in the zone here. No, oh, he's tapped it, he's tapped it. <laughs> it looked like it was going to be another one of those seven pins to get rid of, and then a late pin came along, tapped it on the head, and that was enough to knock it over. Yeah, it was a very powerful looking shot. The seven pin is left standing, but there's some dead wood. Oh, it's, it would have been hit twice, wouldn't it? Yep. It would have gone. So, yeah, maybe a little bit fortuitous, but uh, it all counts. Yeah, it wasn't quite tapped on the head. It turned out to be a body shot. A left hook to the body. Took the seven down. And the look on his face, he knew how fortunate that was. Now, I won't say lucky, but we'll say uh, fortunate. Oh, attack it. Keeps the pressure on, and while Tackett was bowling, Jesper Svensson went and had a very long conversation with his compatriot, Martin Larsen. Great looking shot there from uh, EJ Tackett. Three strikes in a row, keeps the lead. Albeit it's only six pins. Well, with that very, very slight advantage, that really does force this man to strike now because so long as Tackett matches whatever Svensson does, he wins the point. And what a huge morale boost that would be, not only for USA, but for Tackett personally. It would be a massive win for him. It would be his first win in singles in a match where he came in as the underdog. Well, there's the strike from Svensson, so he's thrown his marker down. It makes you wonder how that uh, seven pin in the corner actually stands up sometimes, doesn't it? Almost an identical shot as the one previously, and the seven pin's gone big time. So, to stay in front, Tackett needs to match that. The Indiana native. So far, we've seen his best performance in singles play 
Whatever happens from here, now can he carry it on? Oh yes, the messenger has taken out the ten in the corner. What Svensson do, Tackett does. Well, that's the recipe for success here. All he's got to do is match Svensson. But look at that messenger flying over. Well, it just shows you the amount of power that uh, Tackett uh, creates on the bowling ball and the body reaction. Look at that, cracky. So four strikes in a row, maintains his lead as we come up to the foundation frame, frame number nine. Well, this really does force Svensson to do it again. He's got to have a strike here. Remember, he's the one that is waiting for the opponent to let him in. He's got to make it as hard for Tackett as he possibly can. Oh, no. Well, that didn't look to be a perfect pocket hit either. Just drifted offline a little bit. Yeah, it's, he doesn't snap the ball at the back end, but it, it just dived a little bit too high on the head pin and the uh, six pins left standing, so that can only be a spare. And if he does spare it, it's 19 pins. Tackett can step up, shoot another strike for another 30 and almost sew this game up. Yeah, the applause very subdued indeed because I don't think there are many people in this audience that have missed the point. A spare was just no good, not when you're chasing. Not when you're running out of frames. He knows. Totally out of his hands now. And Tackett, ever since he cleaned up that mess, has been unstoppable. Four in a row. And a five-bagger here would pretty much seal the deal. Whoa, look at that. Would you believe it? It means this one's going down to the wire now. You took the words right out of my mouth, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. Strike was all he wanted. He was high on the head pin, fortunate to break the pins up, and he knew how, how valuable that was, or would have been. Oh, he's only just got that. My goodness me! That was way too close for comfort. Had he missed that, Svensson would have had a, a four-pin lead going into the tenth frame. Look at this. That's ridiculous, isn't it? That stuck a fingernail out as it went past. That was enough to take the pin. That might be enough to give Tackett the point. Well, it's still his to lose, but if Svensson strikes, Tackett will have to match that. Yep, big ball here for... Uh, the European player. He's shot uh, five strikes out of nine frames so far, but this is very much going to be the biggest one. I wonder how much he's still thinking of that missed single seven pin as well, because that is threatening to cost him this point. Can't think about that now. Just got to think about make the strike. Oh, no, no, but that'll do it, I think. It just means that Tackett needs to avoid a split, and he'll win this. Yep, certainly right. A strike or a spare from Tackett, and it's uh, another point for USA. Just didn't quite make the head pin. It was a little bit wide of the uh, down lane marker. It was a single pin yet again in the corner. Spare for two, three, five, which is actually a, quite a low score for Jesper Svensson. Well, at least it's an improvement on his 2-2-4 from earlier today. I tell you, Svensson was the, the pick of the, uh, the crop on Friday night, but his Saturday has shown he's human. Uh, he will look back at that miss on the seven. Uh, he will rue that, but this is threatening to be E.J. Tackett's Weber Cup coming out party. We knew he would get it together. This looks like the moment. All he's got to do is stay clean. All he has to do is avoid any kind of split. And the point will be his. It'll be a big point for the Americans. It'll keep him in front. 
There it is, that'll do it. EJ Tackett, welcome to the Weber Cup. So the Americans go back in front, but Jesper Svensson will be walking out of here in disgust, knowing that was an opportunity spurned. He will have an opportunity in three matches time to come back and get redemption. But right now it's frustration for the Swede. It's delight for EJ Tackett. And a tie is broken. The Americans back in front. Europe's wait for their first lead of the Weber Cup goes on. It's the Americans in front, 9-8. More after this. Team Europe have yet to be ahead in this year's tournament, and that is still the case after our 17th match. Going into the match, the scores were level, but yet again the Americans won a vital match to restore their overall lead. The captains clash next, but for the moment EJ Tackett is the man of the moment, and he's talking to Hannah Wilkes. EJ, finally your first win in a Weber Cup singles match, and what a scalp to take for your first victory. Yeah, it was uh, pretty crazy there, you know. Left that split there in the middle of the game, and uh, even though it was early, I knew it was pretty critical to uh, make that spare. I was able to get it done and uh, throw some pretty good shots. You know, unfortunately, uh, Jesper made a uh, big mistake missing a single pin uh, early in the game, and uh, at the end, it ended up costing him. It looked very much like your game to lose, but there was a little bit of a wobble late on, which was quite similar to Stu Williams in his previous match. Is the pressure starting to get to you players a little bit? I mean, there's there's always going to be pressure. Um, I got up there, I, I stuck a little bit, um, which you know happens sometimes. Luckily, I still made the spare. Um, you know, like Jesper said in his interview before we started, you know, Europe had some momentum going, and I knew I needed to uh, really hunker down and focus in that match and uh, try to stop that and, and get us a win, and I was able to do it. You'll be playing Jesper again later on this evening. He's going to come out really fighting and wanting redemption after that match. How do you approach that game? I'm going to approach it the same way I approach this one. You know, I'm going to come in and fight tooth and nail to uh, try to get us another point. Um, I know Jesper's going to come out and, and bowl a great game, and I know I'm going to have to probably bowl more than, than I just did. My score's going to have to be higher. I expect him to bowl better, so I'm just going to have to step up my game and throw better shots. It is all to play for. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's all still to play for with Tackett surviving the mistakes and finding a way to win. The attention now falls on the respective captains, Barrett and Rash. That match coming next. Commentary for this match comes from Cass Edwards and Nick Calling. Clash of the captains it is then, with the Weber Cup finally balanced. The Americans who've led from the get-go, still in front here, 9-8. Will it be 10-8 after this, or will parity be restored? They met in the final match of the Friday night session. Rash was on the wrong end of that one. Rash playing sparingly today as well. He's talked about his issues with his lower back. Didn't seem to uh, hamper him at all when he played this afternoon. But Barrett will be looking to try and uh, turn up the heat and make that back feel a little bit more sore if he possibly can. They needed him to step up last night because the Americans have made that great start, and he did. Let's see if he can do it again here. Yes, it's uh, Barrett had the win the last time they met, 255 to uh, Rash's 215. We're still wondering whether his back will survive. He did complain about it, whether he's had any chiropractic work or not, we don't know, but uh, he's going to test it on the line now. We're on a freshly dressed lane, 42 feet of oil. There's four times as much oil in the centre part of the lane as there is on the outside. It tapers away to either edge. So these guys will probably be playing reasonably straight down the line. But it will be interesting to see from the get-go. Well, he drifted out of the pocket quite horribly there and is very fortunate to avoid a split. 
I'm not sure if Sean actually stuck on the approach there with that Something one. Something happened, yeah. Because he looked down immediately, didn't he? Uh, it leaves the 4-9 split, and the four-pin top was over, so a single-pin spirit is what it will be to open up with. I think we should keep an eye on him physically as well here, because, as you say, he didn't, uh, he didn't bowl smoothly right there. And he looked kind of surprised as well, but if you... On your sliding foot, if you do stick, and there's the uh, Don Barrett Appreciation Society sending up in the bleachers there. If you do stick on your slide foot, it's not going to do your back any good whatsoever. And it won't do his back any good seeing Don Barrett come out with a textbook strike to open this one up. I'm not going to ask about the hats and the sunglasses, but each to their own. Barrett's happy to have them here. Team Europe's happy to have them here. Well, this man... He's ready to try and restore parity here. Now, let's see how he gets on. He definitely... His, his approach is a little bit more cautious, I think, Cass. I could be wrong, and I'd be interested in your take here. He doesn't seem to be putting quite the power and the ribs into these early balls, as we've seen earlier in the competition. I don't think he's having that a deep knee bend and slide forward. He's kind of checking himself which may not be a good sign. Yeah, we will keep an eye on that. He's spared out again. Yeah, he looks a little bit anxious there, yeah, wasn't he? he? he doesn't look right. He wasn't quite sure whether to stand up and sit down there or look for some sympathy, perhaps. He's not going to get any from Don Barrett, who's going to probably try and blast another strike, but as you say, it's quite interesting. We might just have to keep an eye on Sean Rash. And we'll certainly have to keep an eye on Don Barrett if he's bowling like this. That's two for two. Well, the former world champion on the PBO Tour is um, averaging 250, and if he keeps going like this, he'll hit another 250. Uh, meanwhile, Rash is getting ready. Oh, that's another... Single pin stuck in the corner for the American. He managed to execute that one kind of OK, and he made the pocket, but I got a, got a feeling there is something you know, signaled. He's raised up off the shot, looked to the side of the lane as if he didn't think it was going to go in the right place. It did, but didn't carry, and he's just made the square in the corner. Yeah. Be interesting to hear from him afterwards, whatever happens for the rest of the match, and uh, some chit chat going on between the skippers. Be interesting, Guy Kaminsky's views about this as well. It doesn't look physically the same Sean Rash as we've seen. I don't know how much we're making of that, but he doesn't look quite right. It'd be interesting to hear what he said to Don Barrett, actually, apart from give me the money. Dominator is living up to his nickname here. That's a turkey for the skipper. Little to separate the two team captains. More to come after the break. back to the Weber Cup where the clash of the captains Barrett and Rash is unfolding. For Europe it's the chance to level the overall score. For the Americans it's all about restoring their two-point cushion. A busy lineup in this session with a whole string of singles matches but it's now time to get back to the action with Cass Edwards and Nick Hawley. Well, Rash has got to try and get himself in the strike zone. I know that is stating the obvious, but we've had a little bit of everything so far from him. He's been sparing out safely, but spares are not going to win him this match. Well, he's just taken a re-rack the, with the pins, which he's allowed to do. Maybe you thought uh, one of them was a little bit off-spot, but yeah, we need to keep an eye on him, yeah. See if we can see uh, any signs of uh, discomfort. 
He looked a bit better physically on the approach there, but it, nothing is falling for him, is it? Well, he's suffering as others have suffered in this tournament. Hitting the pocket, even a single pin, and the match is actually slipping away quite quickly, even after four frames, uh, Nick. Well, when your opponent is striking out and you're sparing out, the gap's just going to grow frame by frame. And he's not had a strike yet. That's four, nine spares. It's consistent. Barrett bowled a 2.55 to beat Rash who registered a 2.24 late last night. Yeah, we said earlier that Dom has been averaging uh, 2.50 in his singles matches. He's a uh, 2.32, 2.55 and 2.67 are oh, his three singles matches. And he rings the ten pin in the corner in frame number four. So another 300 potential bites the dust. God, that six pin just rang around that ten so pin, didn't say, it? How did it miss? Well, they call it the ring ten. It's the six pin that doesn't do the damage when it's supposed to. No dramas with his spare ball. Now, this is the chance, you would think, if Rash is going to make a match of this. He's done everything but strike so far. Maybe it's time for a ball change. I mean, he hasn't been that far off. Doesn't look as though he's made a change that I can see. His approach is good, and this time, finally, he gets the strike. At long last, has it come too late? Or have we got ourselves a match after all? Well, he was down on one knee looking for this shot. It's absolutely ripped the rack perfectly. The best shot he's thrown in five frames, and uh, he's saying thank you to someone. Because he didn't leave a corner pin. Now, Barrett's got to hope he gets back on strike here, otherwise he could see that healthy little lead just get nibbled away. It won't take much. Look at that. Same pin. Yeah, the curse of the right-hander is the, uh, the ten pin. It's all to do with the angle that the ball goes into the pocket. Well, you can't see with the naked eye at that sort of speed. But you can see the ball just slightly deflects. It pushes the three onto the six, likely, and the six goes sideways. So he starts out with three strikes, then two spares. A rash, four spares. Well, he's now looking for his first double. Yes. The pendulum continues to swing in his direction here. And I tell you, a strike here will set the alarm bells ringing for the Europeans. Look at that. Here he comes. Well, the nice thing about the game that Sean is bowling, he's just shot two strikes. He stayed clean. He's had nine spares all the way, which in the context of a game is not, not too bad. And at least two of those nine spares. He was very unlucky not to get the full set. Still in the match. Very much so. It's just a matter of whether Dom will give up any pins to let Rash back in. Well, I'll tell you what, this better be a strike. And is. That's just what Barrett needed. Maintains the 22 pin lead that he had with a great looking shot. And the ball comes roaring back from the outside of the lane. Cascades into those pins and takes them all out. So here's Rash looking 
to convert his double into a turkey. Doesn't seem to be any issues with his movement at all. Oh, the messenger hung around and then just said, yeah. A power play from the American skipper takes out that 10. I think this uh, shot actually quite surprised Sean himself. Look at that. Dear, oh dear, that headpin's bouncing all over the place. Unbelievable action. Big muscle ball from the captain. He enjoyed that one. And it made three strikes in a row, so... Maybe a little bit of pressure here on Don Barrett just to shoot another one. There's a lot of pressure on Don Barrett. Because if he doesn't strike here, his lead is very, very slender indeed. Needed that. And it just stays with him. But we've still got three frames to go here. And I'll tell you, Rash has regrouped so well from those first four frames where he nine spared all the way. He's forcing a big performance here out of Barrett. Absolutely, Nick, yes. Whatever Rash does, Barrett has to do as well. He's still got 22 pins in the lead. Three frames to go. Yeah, that's his worst enemy here. There's his four bagger. Big turnaround for Rash. Four spares, four strikes. And it was early days that we were slightly concerned that maybe he had a bit of a a health problem with his back, but he's certainly come through that. Well, the first couple of frames he didn't look quite right. And, uh, there's Jesper Svensson looking on. He didn't look right those first couple of frames, but once he loosened up, well, had no problems. Yeah, you know, footloose job, isn't it? Now, there is still time for Barrett to get over a hauled here. So to keep this 22-pin advantage, this must take all 10, and does. So, two frames left. It absolutely forces Rash to strike out and now hope for the best. That was a very important strike. Well, Don Barrett is reacting as a former world champion and one of the top players in the world would react. He's bowled six strikes. Oh, that's unlucky. It uh, looked, I mean, we'll have to see the replay, but that looked a decent pocket hit. And on another day, that 10 would have gone. And that may be the shot or the pin that loses this one for Rash. Well, let's see. Is it a good, clean pocket hit? I mean, there's not much you change there. Well, a little bit light, I'm afraid. That's what I thought. And so it's just a spare. And that is that, as far as this man is concerned. Yeah, one more shot here in the pocket and the carry all ten, and the match is over. Well, he can spare out as well, just stay clean. Uh, he too takes a re-rack, which he's allowed to do, just to set up another rack of pins. Still got a potential 278 game there, Nick. That's uh, pretty high stuff. Well, I swear his singles play is just getting better and better. Well, the 267 earlier today. And you think he started out with a 232 and then a 255. Then today, that 267, he's on course to break that. Match point, match one. Yep, doesn't matter what happens now. That is an unassailable lead going into the last frame for Don Barrett. Yeah, that's the real captain's innings. Starts with three strikes. He's got four in a row with one frame to go, and the match is won. Yep, not his day. He's not the kind of guy that's going to make an excuse about his back either. You don't get the impression that he's going to start saying, well, yeah, those first couple of frames, I wasn't quite right. But I do wonder, leaves himself an open there just to finish off with. It did seem to take him a couple of frames to get going, didn't it? It did, yes, and it was pretty unfortunate. But as we've said before, it's a marathon tournament with lots of little sprints of just one game only. What about that? Barrett. 278. Barrett's all over the lane and all over Rash. 
Well, he just keeps getting better and better, the skipper, from 2-3-2 to 2-5-5 to 2-6-7. Now a 2-78 game. Dominic Barrett getting better and better. Europe back on terms. It's nine all now in this race to 19. This Weber Cup looks already this early in the competition like it is heading right down to the wire. A captain's effort there from Don Barrett in the Battle of the Captains. He leads Sean Rash 2-0. After that, 278-224 victory. Yet again, these two sides are level, and yet again, it's down to the efforts of European captain Dominic Barrett, who responded to Europe's demand for points with a solid performance. America, via Sean Rash, missed a chance to restore their two-point position. Dominic Barrett is now talking to Anna Wilk. Well, John, that was very much a captain's performance there, wasn't it? Really leading from the front. Yeah, you know, we spoke about the lane conditions and who likes to bowl when, on what pattern, on what, on what condition when in the uh, schedule. Uh, my ball motion on the fresh is pretty good, so that's why I went first, really. And yeah, I'm just, um, I know we're not all, we're getting there. I think we're all bowling a lot better than we were earlier this morning and last night. I'm bowling pretty good now. I think Jesper's bowling pretty good. Uh, he's going to be up in a couple of matches. Then, yeah, Martin and Stu, uh, like 80%, 85%, whereas earlier we were probably all about 50. So we're really close. We certainly don't want to peak too soon. You mentioned Martin, he's up next. Do you reckon he can take the lead for the first time for Europe in this tournament? Yeah, well, we've got to do it sooner or later if we're going to win, and there's no uh, better time than right now. Thanks very much. The lead at stake in our next match. Will Europe take advantage for the first time, or will America resist and restore their lead? All still to play for in the 18th edition of the Weber Cup.